Hello, Nebraska. I am out here in Gearing in our panhandle, and I'm joined by Vicki Sakurata Schepler, and she is basically organizing this museum that you see behind me. It's in honor of the Japanese. And so we're gonna find out more about this museum. Tell us a little bit about this museum, I guess the history of it, and um, how it got moved to this location, because we're on the side of Legacy of the Plains, right? right? So this museum got started um, when I attended an event in Scotts Bluff and found out that this Japanese hall, they were thinking about destroying it and demolishing it. But on the wall were pictures of my grandparents and the many Japanese in the area. So we wanted to preserve it. And that hall had been there for 90 years, since 1928. We got an agreement with the Legacy of the Plains to bring it to this place so it would not be demolished. And then we're able to create this museum dedicated to the Japanese immigrant story in Nebraska. When John and I arrived here today, you had so many stories yes. to share. We wish we had time to tell all the stories, but that's why people need to come out here and see your exhibits. So that's right. maybe kind of tell us when you first come in the door, what you'll see, and then what you'll see as you walk around here okay. in the museum. So when you first walk in the door, you will see the early immigrants that are coming over. They then you see them starting to work on the railroads and as they worked on the railroads and the railroads began to lay people off, they began working for the sugar beet industry, which is a new industry at the time. And then we moved into some of the, the issues that affected Asians only. So Asians were not able to become American citizens until 1952. And then as we move through, it talks about other things. Um, the local Japanese that were supporting them, I have to tell this story, was uh, Tom Osborne's grandfather, who was the representative from both Scotts Bluff and Morrill counties, who also supported the Japanese. And then we move into businesses, because many times they own the restaurants, they own the barber shops, they had hotels that they maintained for Union Pacific. Farming was primarily what many of them did, and so they were taking over the farming. They farmed for Great Western Sugar. We then move into World War II and what happened, the things that were happening here in Nebraska that affected and impacted the Japanese. And as we move through, we also get into the story of incarceration. So um, during World War II, 110 to 20,000 Japanese and Japanese Americans were incarcerated in camps. Citizenship happened in 1952. And then we move into more modern time when we have um, the Japanese nationals and other groups that have really worked to preserve our, our culture. We're excited for um, the big opening, which will yes. be in June. Uh, and is there a website or a place where people can Yes, go? you can go to the Legacy of the Plains website. So many great things are to happen and all of our wonderful volunteers. Vicki, thank you so much for telling us. Well, thank you. All about it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm.